Hey, y'all. Welcome to the 40th episode of the Yarn This Podcast. I'm Shama, Jessie's Girl 84 on Ravelry, Instagram, and Twitter. You can find my Yarn This group on Facebook. If this is your first time watching, thanks so much for giving me a shot. If you're one of my returning Yarnies, thanks so much for coming back. Today is Saturday, October 24th, 2020. <clears throat> it's been a few weeks. Uh, some things have come up, um, which we'll talk about later. But um, let's go ahead and get started with the knitting. And to be perfectly honest with you, there's really only one thing I've worked on in the last, <clears throat> what, two, a little over two weeks, two weeks? I can't remember. Uh, Slip Stravaganza, the Stephen West Mystery Knit Along. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you one other thing, because I think I'm going to try to work on it while I'm talking to y'all, and that is my son's wallaby. Wonderful wallaby sweater. <clears throat> I don't think I've made any progress since last time. Here, here's the front of it with the pocket, the pouch. And what you do is you knit this, the body of it, up to meet the length of this, and then you join them together. But I haven't quite gotten there yet. I still probably have a few more inches, actually. I'd say at least four, five more inches quite a bit more of the body to go, but it's a super quick project. I just need to work on it. Anyway, this is a wonderful wallaby, 1983. That's when the pattern was originally written, and it's by Carol A. Anderson. <clears throat> she has it in all sizes from babies on up to really large sizes, and I think she's also, I know she has, but I don't know anything about it, uh, updated it in the last few years. Anyway, I'm using Knit Pick Swish Worsted in the Marble Heather colorway, which is this beautiful gray. And the pocket, the ribbing around, what, what, the ribbing around the uh, hood, and the ribbing around the, I guess the cuffs, and maybe a stripe or two, is made out of, knit out of Knit Picks Chroma Worsted in the Fathoms colorway. And I love this. I love the fade on this. Anyway, so that's this. Um, I will have it done by Christmas one way or the other, but it's really a super quick knit. I just need to work on it. Um, the one thing that I, like I said, the one thing that I have been working on is the slip stravaganza. Now, I just started clue two, so I'm a week behind now. Um, I think clue two is going to go pretty quickly, but in case you are not caught up yet, um, I'm just letting you know I'm going to show you in just a second, so it's going to be a spoiler. So if you want to look away, I will, uh, I'll get it out, and then I'll tell you when I'm done. Well, you know what, first, before I do that, let me show you the yarns I'm knitting it with. Um, I don't even remember now. I don't think I showed y'all this last time, because I've never actually done the Stephen West Knit Along. So you have two skeins of the main color. And that's this, this beautiful, beautiful gray and all of these pops of color. This is by Savvy Skeins, my friend Allie. And this is her sock base, Sensible Sock. And this is the Color Bomb colorway. I'll show you. This is, I believe, a fairly new colorway for her. Um, I bought one when she had a a trunk show here a few weeks ago and um, and then I discovered that I wanted to do the, the cow so I, I ordered a second one from her but anyway this is the color bomb I'm using another one of her colorways which is also a new one and it's this and I believe this is also on her sensible sock base and the colorway is violet Beauregard which was also one of her um, uh, this this uh, yarn club I've been in for the year, and it's um, cult classic movies. I couldn't think of that word. Sorry. And this is Willy Wonka, which is one of my top movies of all time, both the original and the one with Johnny Depp. But the original has my heart because I love Gene Wilder and because I saw that in the movie theater. Anyway, so this is Violet Beauregard. This is a little bit deeper blue than what it's showing up there, but it's still a beautiful blue. Beautiful. Uh, my next color 
it this is look at this pink look you can see like the purple in there this is a beautiful beautiful pink I got this at the modern skein when we were on the yarn crawl this is um, less traveled yarn and this let's see is champagne diva and her outspoken from her outspoken collection or I actually don't know I say her I don't know who dyes this anyway I think this is a beautiful beautiful pink yarn and the last color that I chose for my third uh, colorway is by Rainy, my friend Rainy of the Moment Yarn Company. And this is her Winter Fiber Fun Retreat 2020 colorway uh, exclusive to that show. So this is the Moment Yarn Company. Winter Fiber Fun Retreat 2020. And here it is. I also got this on the yarn crawl at her shop. Isn't that amazing? The purples, almost pink, and then that deep, beautiful teal green color. It's amazing. Hey, sweet puppy. My dog doesn't like it when I talk to anyone but her. Okay. Now, Stephen has said that we can add in some other colors if we would like. And so I decided today that I'm going to add in one more color, I believe. And I pulled out three colors and had my son choose which one he liked best since he's my artist. And it's this one. This is just beautiful, beautiful. This is Fleece Artist. And I've actually had this yarn for several years now. Um, this is Fleece Artist from Nova Scotia, a, a friend of mine, we uh, used to do a Secret Santa, and she bought this specifically for me and wanted me to make a pair of luxurious socks out of it. It's 80% BFL and 20% nylon, but I've never had the heart to knit this beautiful yarn to put on my feet. Um, and I think this would be the perfect time to pop it in and use use some of it. Anyway, so those are the, color, the the yarns that I'm using. I'm going to pop them back in the bag real fast. Excuse me for a second. And then I'm going to show you my shawl. I was a little concerned because I know that his shawls are notoriously big. They always look pretty difficult to me, although I feel like I'm a, a pretty advanced knitter. Um, like, I've never I've never done entrelock. I've never done... Um, Okay, I'm having a brain fart. I'll think of it in a minute. There are a few techniques I've never done. I'm not big on lace. I've done some lace. Nice, nice. Lace on larger uh, yarn and needles is fine, but not on lace weight yarn and not really intricate lace. Mainly, I don't love it. I appreciate the beauty of it, but... Um, it's not something that I would enjoy even having, so it's not worth it to me to go through all of the trouble of knitting it on a lace weight yarn. Anyway, so without further ado, I'm going to show you what I've done so far. Look away. Okay. Here it is. This is the first part. This is the first part, and I'll tell you what what drew me to this. When he, when he named it Slip Stravaganza, I knew it was going to be slip stitches, and I'm a big fan of slip stitches. I love the way they look. Also, I'm not going to lie, I like the fact that it actually goes faster when you're slipping stitches. So this is the first part, and then he gave you the bonus part, and you had to pick up stitches in a very odd way. So this right here, let's see, from here to here, is the bonus section of part one. It's actually just an extension of the, the original first clue that he gave you. And this right here, these two, are the two that I have gotten, I've done so far on clue two. Now, uh, despite the fact that it's over 400 stitches at this point, it's moving along really quickly, in my opinion. So I think I'll get to clue three get it started because I watched the video today. I don't mind being spoiled. Um, 
So I watched the Clue 3 video today, and uh, I'm really excited about it. So, and like I said, this, this part, despite having a lot of stitches, is moving along really quickly. Um, so when I come back, I should be making my way through Clue 4 in a couple of weeks or so. We'll see. That's my plan anyway. Okay. So that's all I'm working on. Oh, what I forgot to tell you is that the Wallaby, the wonderful Wallaby sweater, I'm knitting it on size 10 needles. And the Slip Stravaganza, I'm knitting it on US 4 3.5 millimeter needles. So, now, uh, I have a few of the things that are in progress, but I haven't touched them at all. Even though I really haven't worked on this, I thought I'd show you anyway. Okay. Um, oh, yes. Uh, during the slip extravaganza, he said we're going to need something like 50-something stitch markers, which we haven't come to yet. Um, I have 50-something stitch markers, but a lot of them are decorative, so they're not particularly lightweight. And I'm not a huge fan of the light bulb markers because somehow the way I hold everything, I usually end up popping them open and poking my hand with them. But for that many, I don't want, I want small, lightweight. And I went ahead and purchased a pack, a big box of the light bulb markers from Amazon. I think it's like 1200, but actually, and I'll show you this in a second. Here they are. You can see all the different colors. There are tons of colors and metallic, but these four over here are literally just safety pins, which is fine. That's fine. But here, here are all the different colors. Uh, metallic, colored, like this purple right here is a shiny, but some of them are just like a more matte finish. Um, pink, two different pinks here and here. Is that right? Yeah. Brown, which I actually love brown. This beautiful blue and this other beautiful blue. Uh, this is more of like a bronzy co color here and, and copper. So there are a million of them. Well, 120 something of them. Anyway, I'm really, really glad to have that because you just never know when you're going to need a bunch of stitch markers or can't find the ones you need or whatever. So anyway, um, I found those, like I said, on Amazon. Okay. So another one bites the dust. We're going to talk about some things that I've finished. First of all, like always, I've finished some preemie hats. This time I've only finished two. Um, this one, which is, I think this is a 10 and a, no, 12 and a half inch or something like that, which is kind of the medium size. And then this is the smallest size that I make, not the smallest size that's on the pattern, but like I, I think I've said before, the hospital that we donate these to, the NICU doesn't ha go super preemie. Like, I think they have to be a certain number of weeks or a certain weight or not have certain problems. But anyway, this is the smallest one. And I'm keeping track, and I've, I've got, I think this was four or five of these. So in total... I have something like 18 of them now. 16 or 18. 17? I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm going to continue to make one every Sunday for the rest of the year and have them ready to take up there on Christmas Eve or Christmas morning. Um, the other things that I've finished, I think I talked last time about Corey Ackleberger's new ebook that is called uh, Knit Words. And it is beautiful. I love everything about it. And I, I'm pretty sure I showed you what the patterns look like. And I'm knitting some lanyards, the, just the wrist lanyards for gifts right now. Um, so this is the first one that I knit. And I'm knitting these out of acrylic because these are going to go on your wrist and they might need to be washed. I'm giving them to knitters, but that's beside the point. I just, I, and also this is worsted weight. If I bought enough worsted weight in the colors that I need, it would cost me an arm and a leg. Not to sound cheap, but that would be very expensive. So anyway, this is the first knit and purl. And then it is actually the same, but reversed colors. 
on the inside and the outside. And you're going to put a, a D hook. I'll probably put it about here. And then you can hang scissors, stitch markers, uh, the little uh, pickup tool, the little crochet hook pickup tool. Whatever you need, you can hang on this. And like if you're out and about, you can just wear it on your wrist. So this is the first one, and I've actually only done two now. And this is the second one. And here's the back side of it. Oops. <laughs> Knit and pearl, like you can't read that. So I've got three more to do, and then I can uh, give gifts. Hey. Um, so what else have I finished? Okay, yeah, one other thing. So a few weeks ago, my cousin messaged me and asked me if I would knit. Pop, hang on just one second. My cousin messaged me. Uh, her daughter-in-law was about to have a new baby boy. They have a little girl who's two and a half or so. And um, he was actually delivered yesterday by C-section. So um, anyway, they sent me these pictures and asked if I could make them this little set. Well, part of it was crocheted and part of it was knit. And I mean, for a newborn, it's tiny. It's going to be for pictures. And so I, uh, I said yes. And um, I actually gave them to her on Tuesday, I believe. So I don't have them here, but I'm going to show you the pictures. Let's see. I have some individual pictures, but I'm just going to show you the one picture of everything. So right here is the little hat. It's a little fisherman's hat. And then you just pull a, a yarn, a piece of yarn through it. And then I, I left it untied so that they could tie it to fit his little head. Um, and these are the little fish that you crocheted along with it. And so that was very easy. Even, even though I'm not good at crochet, that, that was really easy. Now this, as you can tell, is a diaper cover, and I, I started crocheting one, and it just was a disaster. And I found this. This is called, excuse me, this is called Rib Around Soaker by Melly C, and um, it's really cute. It, the thing was, they had you knit this thing way up high, like almost to their armpits, in my opinion. So I ripped back a few inches. Um, and, um, but it was a very simple little, little, um, uh, dapper cut, well, soaker. I knit this on US 6, 4.4 millimeter out of Knit Picks Bravo Worsted in the Solstice colorway, which is beautiful. And I forgot to say that this, the Little Fisherman set is by Dusty Priu, Priu and I used an H hook. And these are mostly just yarn scraps, so I'm not exactly sure. Most of them are probably uh, Hobby Lobby's I Love This Yarn. Anyway, the last thing they asked is if I could knit this hat. It's called Charlie, and it's by Martha Johnson, and I've actually had this pattern. I bought this pattern several years ago. I call it the Goldfish Cracker Hat. Um, I'm going to actually pull up a closer up picture of that and show you. Okay, this is a knit hat, and um, I knit all of this out of knit picks, mostly Brava, but then the little goldfish had to be knit out of a fingering weight yarn, so I used knit picks, um, mm, I forgot, um, anyway, this was a super fun little hat to knit. Now, the fish were originally stocking that, but, but they're tiny, and they just curled, and I thought, well, I've got to lay them out flat, and I don't want to fight with them when I'm sewing them on. So, I just went back and did them. I did one in stocking that, and I went back and did the rest in garter, and I love the way they came out, and they laid flat, so I, I didn't have to fight with them, but you can see, you can see that I didn't get them perfectly lined up, but my son said it looked like they were just swimming along. Anyway. Really, really sweet, cute little pattern. If you ever want to knit a hat, and I think it goes all the way, you know what, I'm not sure. I feel like it goes all the way up to adult. Um, 
and I knit this on US 6 four millimeter needles. That was a fun little project. And I would probably knit that hat again. I did the zero to six month instead of newborn because I didn't know when they were going to use it for him. And it's a, it's a pretty sizable hat for a newborn. But anyway, I think it'll be fine. Who, who knows? He might have a huge noggin. <laughs> a lot of newborns do. What do I have coming up? Well, first of all, I want to get these things finished. But also, I would like to knit the Dawsons and Dragons. Let me see if I can pull this up while I'm talking to you. Uh, my son and daughter-in-law's wedding theme was Dawsons and Dragons. Um, so, I wanted to knit them. I found this ampersand that looks like a dragon. And uh, it's shaped like a dragon. So, I actually have the pattern. And ampersand... I'm not sure how to spell it, Ann for sand. And uh, so I would really like to do this for them. For Christmas, maybe. We'll see if I've got time. Um, I know that my daughter-in-law appreciates handmade things. Well, okay. Anyway, uh, and I want to do a D, and I want to do this dragon-shaped Ann for sand and another D. And I want to find a fancy D. And just maybe get it framed or frame it myself or something. Um, also, my nephew Alton, my older nephew, and my niece Etta asked if I would knit them dragons for Christmas. So I'm going to come up with a cute dragon for them. I've got to come up with something for their brother, Caden. And then mostly I want to knit on Christmas things. Um, as soon as I finish the shawl and the sweater. Also, though... Uh, last, if you're a Patreon of Bakery Bears, you already know this. A patron, sorry. Um, but if you don't know it, um, they have what they call their Advent every year for their patrons. And it runs December 1st through the 24th. And it's a, uh, hmm, here we go. It's... It's like a little daily vlog, and it's really, really fun. Last year, Kay, every other day, she came up with um, a sock knit along. And it was a Christmas sock, and I've shown you all these socks before. I think I have them put away now. Um, and um, they, uh, they were so much fun. And I actually finished them Christmas night knitting both socks. So she said we're going to have another knit along this year. And I think she said it's not going to be socks. And she showed that she already had her yarn for it. And it's 10 20 gram mini skeins. Well, I I know I'm going to knit it. So I went ahead and started through my yarn. And, and actually cruised Etsy for a while the other day to pick out which yarns I want to use. But I decided I have a ton of mini skeins. And... Um, I went through and I picked out a bunch and I got my son again to come help me. And we he chose these because she said they need to be lighter colored, not super busy, so light speckled, tonal, uh, not if it's a variegated it needs to be a very lightly variegated. Um, so these are the ones that I picked out. And I'm super excited about them. I'll, I'll ball them up, and then I'm going to use this picture as a reference to to know what order to knit them in. Anyway, um, and there's a big significance to to these yarns, and I'm going to talk about them at the very end. So we are family. Um, you know, I'm always talking about how much I love the girls in my knitting group and how what good friends we all are and how much I just cherish my friendship with them. And um, this past weekend, since we haven't been anywhere, no fiber festivals since 11 months ago, we decided to rent an Airbnb in Galveston. And we went down there Friday night. And um, I ended up leaving early Sunday to come back and go to church. But they, they hung around and did some things and it even went to Build-A-Bear without me. But anyway, we had the best time. We relaxed. We went out and had a really nice dinner together Saturday night and celebrated Aaron. Um, Aaron, sorry, Aaron and Janine's birthdays that night. And um, just really, really had a great, great time. Mostly we relaxed. We did 
facial masks after we got back that night and just um, most of us were knitting on the slip stravaganza so we were comparing notes and talking and showing and um, just really really had a good time now Erin had a bag of yarn that she wanted to get rid of and so she brought it and let me tell you I know a lot of people and, and I'm watching the most recent episode of bakery bears I paused it to come record and Kay and my friend Michelle and a lot of other people get overwhelmed with their stash. I know that also um, Natalie of the of the Love and Stitches podcast paired hers way down recently. But for me, I love having a lot of yarn. It's a comfort to me because I worry about things and I worry about what if there comes a point where we don't have enough money for me to buy yarn. And um, I don't think I have at this point enough yarn to get me for the rest of my life. But, um, I have a lot. I think I could get through a few years. But anyway, Erin brought some yarn because she wanted to pare down. And I always feel like I'm such, such a yarn hog. So I picked out a bunch of them. But then I put a few back and uh, I kind of waited to see where, where everybody was going to go. And I ended up getting a few and I'm going to show you what I got. So two of them are Night Owl yarns, and I've shown you some yarn from Night Owl before. She's a local dyer. She's very young. I think she might be 21 now, and she's been dyeing yarn for at least three or four years. So she's 21 or 22, and maybe even been dyeing yarn since she was 17. She really has a great color sense, and the, the yarns, the, the colorways that she bases are, are kind of uh, things that really speak to me anyway plus she's just a super sweet kid I don't have the tag for this one it might have come off in the bag and I might check with Erin and see if she can send me a picture of it but this one I, everybody knew I had to have this one this is a this is a Christmas colorway and again I, I'll try to find out what what the name of this colorway is but I'm super excited about this whether I knit this up this year or not I don't know but mm, I know I'll probably put this in my memories blanket soon the other night owl fibers I've got is called bright uh, feathers not owl fibers <laughs> is bright feathers is the colorway um, this is a self striping and I love the way she balls up her self-stropping but look at these colors so so beautiful so beautiful so I'm very excited to have these two also she had this one now this is Miss Babs Babette and the drunken watermelon colorway this is a fingering weight and this is I guess the hot shot base I'm not really sure oh drunken watermelon isn't that just beautiful so pretty. If you're wondering why I'm not sniffing my yarn a lot today, with all of the allergens in the air right now, I'm pretty stuffy, so I'm not, I'm not smelling great. I mean, you know. <laughs> I hope I don't smell bad. Okay, let's see. Oh, yeah, this too. Also, I got these two Regia, and this is a random stripe. This is a K Facet design line. Isn't that just beautiful? I do love Regia yarns. It is such a workhorse horse, workhorse yarn. And um, obviously, I don't know the colorway since they don't name theirs. But this was 50 gram. I got two of these. See K facet there. He has amazing color taste as well. And. Oops, I got this Malabrigo, the Carabino, Carabino, and I guess, oh, this is also a fingering weight yarn. Whew, this was another one that I just had to have. Um, no, Carabino is the colorway. Look at those blues, and you can't really tell. It's getting dark out. Uh, this is, well, you can kind of see it there. This is kind of a tealy green. And this, now you can kind of see that that's green. So I'm super excited about this as well. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. 
But you know, that's the thing about my stash. Um, like I had to have all those yarns to do the slip extravaganza. And I mean, I had just bought all, but one of them, the only one I had to buy was a, se a second skein of the main color, but I already had the one. So I go in and I shop my, my stash quite a bit, especially when I'm going to have something with a bunch of different yarns in it. So that's my reason for having a large stash. Another reason for having one. And the last one I almost didn't get, but it went back in the bag and everybody went to bed. So I thought, well, nobody wants this. This is Manos del, del Uruguay, which I have some and I love it. Um, but this is a heavier weight. Um, hmm. Looks like it's at least worsted. It's a kettle dyed. And the colorway is Speeding Ticket. And this was dyed by someone named Andrea. Um, anyway, I'm sorry. I don't know the, the weight. It's either, I think it's worsted though. And I got two skeins of this. Isn't that just the most beautiful reds and pinks in there? And it's hard to see. It's definitely washing out. Take my word for it. It's not, I mean, it is a bright pink, but it's not as hot pink as it looks here. It's amazing. So anyway, I'm super excited about this as well. I'm going to put this where it goes down here. Okay. So those are all of my... Nope. I have one more acquisition. Maybe two. But you've seen one of them. I don't remember if I had the Violet Beauregard colorway the last time I recorded. I feel like I did from Allie from the uh, cult classic movies. Well, this month she had to have a Halloween theme. And it is, okay, you can't really tell so much from the gray, but let's dig in here. You see that red? What does that look like to you? Looks like blood drops to me. And there's a reason for that. The colorway is Sweeney Todd. And every month we get a really cool stitch marker. Usually it's the movie cover, but this month it's a pair of scissors. This is so cool. Allie is a genius. I absolutely love everything she does, and I love her. So that's really all of the yarn that I had to talk about. But I was going to tell you on the way up, we have, if you're watching out of Texas and if you don't know about Bucky's, Bucky's is a convenience store. The cleanest restrooms that you will ever see. And there are always a ton of them. Especially the bigger ones have a ton of them. And they're always clean. So, um, we stop and get snacks at Bucky's. Go to the restroom. If you need water. They have sandwiches. They have meat. They have salads. They have, like, pickles. They have, uh, like, snack cups. I got a cup of uh, cheese, cubed cheese and um, some turkey, I believe, or ham. And in the lid, it was a cup, and on the lid, inside the lid were pretzels. Um, I mean, there's really nothing you can't get there. They have clothes. They have a lot of uh, their own clothes, like this. This is a Bucky's Halloween shirt, what, which I got the other day, and I got a pair of sweatpants because I needed new sweatpants, and they had some really cute ones. And they're amazing. They're great sweatpants. But anyway, Susan... And I got there first, one of the Sue, Sue, Susans in our group. And um, so we were together, and we actually got there first. And so we waited for the rest of the girls to get there, which was super dangerous because we were just walking around shopping. And I ended up getting a few things. Besides the shirt and the sweatpants and some snacks, I got a chicken salad sandwich which I was going to snack on because I hadn't had lunch at that point on the way down to the Airbnb. And um, I opened the box while I was driving and was going to take a bite. And that sucker was massive. We finally got we were at, to a stoplight in Galveston and I took a couple of bites. But I couldn't just pick it up out of the box and, and not expect everything to fall out in my lap. It was delicious though. And I only got a few bites of it. But anyway, so one of the things that I bought... It was a Christmas necklace, and it's stretchy, and it's bells, which I know everybody's just going to love, and I think there were some earrings, and now I wish I'd gotten them, so I'm going to have to stop by one and get one, but they also had a matching 
bracelet. So, I'm ready for Christmas. I am ready for Christmas. I'm always ready for Christmas. So, probably a couple of weeks I'll put up my decorations and then I'll give you a tour because I've never done that before. And every year I say I'm going to and I never do. What else did I get? Oh, yeah. I got another Christmas ornament. Peace, Love, and Bucky's. <laughs> it's a glass. And it's got little peace signs and hearts all over it. Oh, I'm excited about putting this on one of my trees this year. Um, I also got another ornament. But this one has a story. So, Susan and I decided that we would, sorry, this is in a bag. We would stop on the way back and get our ornaments because we both chose one. That she wanted one that's a, a mermaid. She loves mermaids. And, um... We decided we'd get them on the way back, and then I thought, you know, I'm coming back, and I may not have time to stop, and it's a good thing I, I did get what I wanted that day, because I didn't have time to stop that Sunday morning, um, <clears throat> but we decided we would not get these ornaments that day, because they might break, so I went ahead and got my flamingo, anyway, beautiful, I have a flamingo tree, which you will see. And I immediately dropped it and broke the foot off. So I'm going to see. I got just got some Gorilla Glue Super Glue. And I'll see if I can get this to stay on. Oh, I think I see how it goes on. Yeah, I think I can probably get it to work. So that's what I get for uh, not listening to my friends, isn't it? Anyway, and the other thing that I got was this beautiful marble jewelry tray. And the reason I got it, well, first of all, I love marble. And I loved this. There was a white one um, that had some, it was a marble. And it was a white marble. They also had a white marble, but the center part, I don't know if you can, yeah, you can see how it indents here. It had gold leafing in it, which was beautiful. And that was actually the one I was going to get. But then I saw this. And honestly, I wanted to see the marble. I didn't really want the gold leafing. And... They did gold leafing around the edge, and you can see it's kind of scratched anyway. But the thing that really, really got me, and I don't know if you can see this. Let's see if I can get it to. It's from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Stone Mountain, Georgia is near where my uncle lived when I was a young kid. And we went there, and my dad and my Uncle Larry and my cousin Scott was a baby, so Uncle Larry carried him, but we all climbed up Stone Mountain together the the women, <laughs> the moms stayed on the ground. And I don't know if my brother and my cousin Alicia were born yet. Shh, shh, shh. It's okay, Poppy. But anyway, I had to get it because it made me think of that time in my life. What else? Okay, two quick patterns I wanted to tell you about. Arnie and Carlos had a couple of um, stocking patterns. I'm going to take this off. Sorry, just a minute. Because it's going to jingle all the way to the end of the podcast if I don't. Um, so they've decided, Arnie and Carlos have decided that they're going to release a Christmas stocking every year and apparently it's not so much a thing there in Norway as it is here. But um, they know that they have a huge American following. So um, they're going to release one every year. I think this is their third one. And I bought all of them. Um, and I wanted to show them to you. So I, we have stockings that I made fabric, sewn stockings several years ago. So I didn't, these won't be to hang on the mantle. But I thought, you know, I can hang them around my house because I love having Christmas stuff. So why not? Why not just have beautiful stockings hung up everywhere? And when, when I have grandchildren, I will sew them once because when my, my daughter-in-law was coming into the family last year, I made one for her and then I made one for our dog, Poppy, and her, her dog, Honey. So anyway, um, I'm going to show you this in a second. Shopping welcome. I'm at ArnieCarlos.com, by the way. ArnieCarlos.com if you want to look for these patterns. They have a ton of patterns for sale. Um, here we go. And this is, this was, you could buy all three of them at once or buy them separately. And the day that I bought mine, the, the, buying them separately, they were on sale. 
so they were uh, actually less expensive to buy them separately. So here they are. Oh, they're so beautiful. Aren't those amazing? Arnie and Carlos are geniuses. And if you don't watch their podcast, you should. Their regular podcast comes out every Sunday, but every Wednesday now, they've started doing sit and knit for a bit with Arnie and Carlos, and it's much more casual, just kind of talking about things. Some about knitting, some about life, what they're doing. Um, and I just, I just really get a lot out of watching them. They're very calming to me. And, um, so that, that is, those are some patterns I bought, but also, let's see if I can pull this up now. Um, this is a new pattern by Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits, and it's the last unicorn. So not only is it unicorn, which is my thing, but it's also the last unicorn, which is a movie I loved when I was probably in high school. And, um... She has this now for children to adults, plus there's a hat pattern and a cow pattern. And it looks a lot like a, a sweater and um, leg warmers that I had in high school. Oops. Sorry. And I actually still have them. I can't wear them, but I kept them. Anyway, here is that pattern. It's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, I bought a couple of patterns, a few patterns from her recently as well. But anyway, so the title of this episode, as you can see here, is Knit Along With Me. And the reason I'm saying that, and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail at this point, but I'm actually in three knit alongs right now. First of all, I've already talked about the West Knits MCAL, hashtag West Knits MCAL, and slap, uh, hashtag Slip Stravaganza. That's, that is a tongue twister. And those are going on right now. That's going on. I actually don't know how long that's going to go on. Uh, the last clue will be released this coming up Friday, the October 30th, but I'm sure the knit along will go on longer than that because most people can't knit that quickly. Some people have these clues knit the next day. Who are you? How do you knit so quickly? I can't. I just can't. The other, But the other two, sorry, I got distracted. The other two knit alongs are the hashtag fall garment knit along with Natalie, and that is a full garment, adult garment and it's going to end the end of this month. No, the end of November, sorry. I don't know that you have to have it finished. I kind of don't think you do. Um, it's just to kind of get people to knit their first garment or to work on a garment that they've had on the needles for a while. I don't think you had to have started it when, it's, when that started. But I did start Kelby's sweater because of her knit along. Um... But the last thing that I'm participating in, it actually goes until the Super Bowl, and that is the Down Cellar Studios Pigskin Party Knit Along 20 for 2020. And um, I'm not at all going to go into detail. This is a very complicated knit along. It's easy in that for every 100 yards you knit in a project, you get seven points, like a touchdown. If it's under 100, you get three points, like a field goal. You have to fill out a Google form. Your best bet is to go watch her podcast that explains it. It's not hard, but there's a lot of detail, and it would just be easier for you if you went and watched it. Um, anyway, so why don't you join in some knit-alongs with me right now? I always love a good knit-along. I rarely win, but that's okay. It inspires me to do some things that I would like to do and kind of pushes me to get them done. And maybe hope for the best, because somebody wins, right? Anyway, the, the Down Cellar Studios pigskin is huge. So, gazillions of people are joining, and I don't know that I have a chance, but we are on teams, and we encourage each other. I know that one of the girls on my team is also knitting the um, Slip Stravaganza. Now, if you do decide to join and you hadn't joined up to now, would you please uh, use my name? Um, it'll tell you to to tell to list the person who uh, who you joined because of. And so, uh, if you would, 
use my name and then my team will get 25 points. I would really, really appreciate it. Hold on one second. Just a second. She thought she heard something outside. Sorry about that. Anyway, so uh, look up how to do, how to join, and how to participate and get points in the pigskin knit along. Um, let's see. Okay, there are a couple of other things. In the last few weeks, one of my favorite shows, Home and Family, on the Hallmark Channel has come back. And um, they have crafts and recipes every day. And I've got some really, really good ideas. One of the things that I plan to do, and I'm going to see if my daughter-in-law and maybe some of my friends want to do this, is I bought some tree slices uh, from Amazon. And um, you take pine cone, which I also bought. I have a lot of pine cones, but they're, they're never great ones. So I bought some fairly large ones. And I think you cut off the bottom and you glue them down. And then you can... Uh, make them look like little Christmas trees. So I'm super excited about that. And I know that my daughter-in-law is going to want to make one of those with me. Also, uh, you can make initial keychains. Now, they, they did these with liquid clay. Fimo, I think, has a liquid clay now. But it was rather pricey. And I think I'm going to make, make some crafts using this mold and make some keychains for people for Christmas using their initials. But instead of using liquid clay or polymer, polymer? resin, resin, um, I'm going to use hot glue. And uh, we'll see. It might be a disaster, but I'm going to make, make one and try it out and see how it goes. But I think this is a fun, cute idea that you could make. This came, coincidentally, since I'm making keychains, and this is crinkly, sorry. This came with all kinds of keychains, and I'm so sorry. I didn't want to dump these out. Came with gold, these little lobster claws. Keychains. Uh, maybe they all have lobster claws on them. Huh. I didn't realize that. So they're gold and silver. No. Not all of them do. Some of them are just plain. Like this. And they come with little screws and little... Um, for you to be able to hook them up. To uh, hook them all together. And also jewelry, jewelry pliers, which I already had. But it, it never hurts to have another pair. <laughs> So, and this is the, these are the little tubs of glitter, little pots of glitter that came with it. I have some other glitter as well. But, I think those are going to be so much fun to make with people. It seemed like there was one more craft. Oh, yeah. They, they took these wooden discs and they made them, they painted them to look like ornaments. But you can go to the, uh, hallmarkchannel.com, Home and Family, and look at some of their Christmas crafts that they're working on already. And... I don't know if you're like me that loves, loves, loves everything Christmas. The Hallmark Christmas movie Countdown to Christmas started yesterday. So I'm, I've set it up to record all but one this weekend because there's an actress in one of them that I really don't tolerate well. So I'm not going to watch that one. But um, anyway, I think that was all that I had to talk about except for one last thing. And it's not pleasant and I hate to end on a sad note. But I can't... Um, I can't ignore this. I need to talk to y'all about this. So, um, I know that y'all have heard me talk about many, many times my friend Kim of Kim Marie's Knit Knacks. We've been friends for several years now. Um, uh, probably 14 years, almost. And, um, we just started off meeting up. We're both members of the Church of Christ. And we met up at a friend's wedding shower several years ago in Lufkin, which is where my parents live. But we both live in the Houston area. So we met up in a town that we didn't live in. And then I ran into her at a bookstore a year or two later. And that's kind of when our friendship really started. Um, and then I knew that she was knitting. And I asked her to join my knit group. And then we just became fast friends. And then she was laid off from her job. I'm kind of just giving you the history. And um, she decided that since she was homeschooling her son... That since she didn't, she had been laid off, that she was going to start a yarn dyeing business. 
And y'all have seen her yarns. I've knit with her yarns and knit with her yarns. I've gone with her fiber festivals. We, I was her booth babe. I would set, help set up. Um, I would take over the booth when she needed to go somewhere else. But a lot of what I did was set up and take down and I ran around and socialized with people and I, I got to know a lot of people because of Kim. And um, a few weeks ago, I got a phone call from a, a friend of ours asking me if I had talked to Kim's husband. And I said no. And I was driving and she said, what are you doing right now? And I, I told her I was driving. She said, I'll call you later. And I, I had such a bad feeling about it. I said, no, tell me now. And I'm sure you've already guessed and most of you that, that are my friends, you already know anyway, but Kim had just suddenly passed away unexpectedly, completely unexpectedly. Um, uh, her husband had gone to work and she hadn't been feeling great that day and she had laid down and um, passed away. We don't know why. We don't know what happened. Um, anyway, so just like that. And um, I'm on my mind and in my prayers constantly is her 13-year-old son, Ethan. And um, he's been homeschooled his whole life, so, you know, I don't know what's going to happen with that. Um, he's in junior high, so I really hate for him to have to start back right now with, with all that entails junior high. But, you know, it's out of my hands, and all I can do is pray for them. But, um, anyway... Uh, I have bags and yarn that she made and memories, pictures, um, and um, I'm so happy that I had the times with her that I did. Uh, one of the one of the, we had little things that would happen on our trips that we would always laugh about, like. Uh, at the end of one of our trips, we were loading up, and we were exhausted, and it hadn't been a very good weekend as far as sales went. It was right after a storm here when Harvey hit, and so we did, the business wasn't great that weekend, and it was Sunday afternoon, and we were loading up, and we knew that we wanted to go get something to eat because we were starving, and we were trying to get one particularly long piece of our booth, her booth, into the back of her car, and she was trying and trying, and it wouldn't go in, and finally she just slammed it in. And um, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so when we got in the car, she was like, I'm really sorry about that. I'm just super hangry. So we, we I always joked with her about being hangry. And we always had a playlist. She always had a playlist, or I did, that we would listen to in the car. And we would sing and dance in the car. And, you know, we've, we've been everywhere all over Texas. And our first, our first uh, fiber festival was the East Texas Fiber Festival in Lindale. And it was freezing that weekend. And the building that they had it in was this old, beautiful uh, brick building. But it was very old. And it was just a cement floor and brick walls with no windows or doors. And uh, we were between... The, the, the doors were kind of garage door size doors. There's one on both sides of the buildings and at each end. And we were kind of sitting between the two on the sides of the building. So there was this breezeway and literally we could not warm up. I had on two coats, a thermal shirt or two, two shirts, I think, um, arm warmers. I was knitting a pair of socks and I would, when I stopped, I would just slide them onto my hands. And I think I had on a, a knitted hat and this girl that was working there had some fleece blankets in her car and she asked us if we would like one. We both said, please and thank you. But, you know, just memories like that. Our first trip to Mississippi, she ended up not being able to set up her booth that year, but she had a class that she took. We drove to Mississippi for her to take a class, and I went and hung out with some of the friends that I met because of her. Uh, Penny and Stacy from um, Brazen Stitchery and Allie from, um, what is wrong with me? I'm sorry, Allie from Savvy Skeins. Those are my friends, my actual friends, because of Kim. I probably would have met them, but I never would have 
hung out with them like I did because of Kim. I started teaching classes at festivals last year because of Kim. Anyway, I'm going to miss her. There's a very, very empty hole in my heart right now. But I have some good memories. And I loved her, and she loved me. And I hate to end on that sad note, but I didn't want to talk about frivolous things after that. But there is one thing I wanted to say. This, these mini skeins that I showed you for this upcoming Knit Along with the Bakery Bears podcast uh, for their Advent calendar, every single one of these mini skeins are Kim's. So it's going to be extra, extra, extra special to me to knit that up. And like I said, I'm sorry to end on this sad note, but just know that I loved her. I always will love her, and she has a very special place in my heart, and I have so many good memories, and I'm thankful for that. Um, anyway, hug someone that you love, and don't forget ever forget to tell people that you love them. And until next time, knit on, my friends.